Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the first ever career mode on FIFA 22 with Manchester United. Now, I chose this club because if you watch FIFA 21 career mode, I'm a big fan of United. Actually, they're my football team. I pretty much every year on FIFA do a career mode on this team specifically. It's more of a short term career mode because the team in this, on paper, which is what this game is pretty much based off, is a very good team. So, to challenge myself even further, the only position I could not sign and have a new signing from is the central defensive midfield position. Because that is the main focus of my United right now. And, because a lot of controversy, I cannot sell our captain, Harry Maguire, in the first season. But, ladies and gentlemen, these are going to be the settings. We're going to be playing on world class, five minutes. European competition will be enabled, no takeover. Make it strict international job offers. Let's disable them for the series, and the first transfer window will be enabled. But, ladies and gentlemen, it is ready to shine. Man United, Old Trafford, we are here. 21 is coming. There I am boys, I don't have that actual hair, I look a bit like Draco Malfoy, but there I am, Shadow Hunter is now the new manager of Manchester United, we will not be doing the Invitational Cups, because we don't really need to, we've got too much money for that in this game anyways, even though Man United's debt is up to nearly a billion dollars, because of the lasers, and yeah, I'd rather not get into that, it's a bit too uh, political, but here is the team. And because in this team, they actually saw Paul Pogba injured, for the first couple of games, I will not play Pogba on the pitch. Um, Alango's already on the pitch, nicely done. Sancho is a left mid in this, so yeah, we're going to have we're gonna be having Sancho and Alango keep exchange positions like this every 15 to 20 minutes or so in the game. Bruno, obviously one of our star players, we're going to be playing him a bit more in the camp position. Ronaldo, he'll be a bit more up. Sancho, I want a bit more down. And Alanga, the same. Because I want these to receiving the balls a bit more often. Fred and McTominay. That's the tricky situation there. Varane. Him. Tellez. Diogo Delo, who I think has been, besides for Alanga, the most improved player since Ranić has arrived. But I'll be honest with you, the defence in our team now is very solid. Obviously this man here, Victor Lindelof, has a lot of claims to Maguire's spot, but he is the captain. And I just said we're going to be keeping the captain for the team. A bit of fodder here. Uh, Lingard, Pogba, Henderson, Eric Bailly, Mata, and maybe Shaw Tire. They're the ones that I want to kind of get out the club maybe. I would love to renew Pogba's contract as a United player, but I don't know if... I think he's been a bit of a waste at United. I think to make him a bit happier, he needs to go play in France. See that injury prone, has flair. It's just, I don't think it worked out at my United for Paul Pogba. And his peak years were kind of diminished because of his kind of half arsed work rate at times. Now, before I go anywhere, there's obviously a bit of rope, uh, s stuff about De Gea in career modes. First off, I will not be selling De Gea. I think De Gea will retire at Man United. And I think because of that, I'm going to keep him at United. And plus, he's probably my favourite player in United right now. Besides from maybe Sancho. But, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to make this realistic. So, if I do sign someone, they need to be linked to United in the past three years. So, like Sancho, for example, last year in FIFA 21, would have been someone I signed. Obviously, I didn't have the money for it, so I went with Lozano. Big mistake. Now, this man. Edison Cavani is the only backup in the, in the United senior team to Cristiano Ronaldo. Now let me tell you something, 
Ronaldo Cavani will be the two strikers playing, but we need someone to be playing in the EFL Cup and the Carabao Cup. And we need someone who is young, exciting, and someone who doesn't hit women. <coughs> Greenwood. So we're gonna go. Our first position will be will be getting a young, hot prospect in the striker position. Because after a certain someone <coughs> Greenwood. Um we don't really have a young kind of striker to go out for. Now, Eddie Nketiah, contract expiring, we'll keep a look out for him. Could be a good signing, but he's from Arsenal and don't really want to go down that road. Ben Brereton Diaz has been linked with a lot of the young t uh, lower teams in the Prem. Very proven. Jamie fucking Vardy. Now, I'm not going to sign him, but just want to shout about. Che Adams, don't really care. Um, Central midfield is not a big issue. So, never should. World Prowse would be a very good sign, but I don't think that's who I'm going to go for because he's lucky there. About 36 million, very cheap. One of the best in the double price. Obviously, uh, Ericsson at Brentford. Really glad to have him back in the Prem, and I'm very glad he is up, healthy, and going. So, we're going to have a look at some young strikers that I'm thinking of. Uh, the first one is going to be someone that I think United should have signed in January. Julian Alvarez. There he is. He's currently on loan at River Plate, but he is someone that I really wanted United to sign. He seems like a next Aguero kind of player. So I'm going to put him on the scout. Let's have a look at some more strikers. Um, someone who I was thinking was Harry Kane. Because of that Pochettino connection. But I did Kane before. And I don't like him in this game. He's just too sluggish. Um, and plus we need someone a bit younger. Not someone who's going to be clashing with Ronaldo and Cavani too much. Daddy Ings. Still, no. Like I said, Harry Kane. Shame. Lacazette, no. Absolutely not. Uh, Bollingoli! No. Obviously, with uh, scouting, ending in Ketia. Uh, Divock Origi, we cannot. A rule I have in my head is we can't sign people from Liverpool or City, which is why the Julian Alvarez one is a bit tricky for me. So I'm just going to keep him in the scouts until he moves. Ollie Watkins, I think he's going to be a permanent state Aston Villa, so I'm not going to try to go for him. Workhorse, as uh, I can't remember his name now. But anyways, um, the workhorse. Timo Werner, no. I don't see Tuchel selling Hummel, um, Werner. Lee Gunn, obviously the key one in here is obviously a Gillian Mbappe, but Myron Boadu, he is one of them that I'm thinking of. Ben Yedda, no, can't go for him. I don't think we should go for him anyways. Jonathan David, scout for later. Moose Dembele, I don't. Obviously, everyone's going to be screaming like Mbappe, Haaland, Osimhen. No, I'm afraid not. Mauro Icardi, no. Needs one young quick and eager to prove themselves and Bappe this would just make this career done already in the first episode so I'm going to come back to you guys when I found a list of five players and then I'm going to sign out of those after I've scouted them who I'm going to sign before we continue ladies and gentlemen we've got a transfer offer for Victor Lindelof for 22.2 million and it seems like we get about 29 million for him now I'm going to say no to this only because Lindelof is going to be our third centre back and I think if we do get Maguire out of the way after season one, Lindelof will be the guy to replace him. Or another person I have in mind who I will reference later in the season. But I think just so if any of you guys remember this, I'll be impressed. But the other guy I want to go for is Antonio Rudiger next season. So just keep an eye on that. If you remember it, come back to this video and be like, hey, oh, hey, yo. So, ladies and gentlemen, these are my four options. I've gone with Patrick Schick, 
Myron Boadu, Dusan Vlahovic, and Jonathan David as my four backup strikers. But I'm going to drop one off the off straight away, and that is Dusan Vlahovic. He's just gone to Juve, and it wouldn't make sense with Gut United within three months, two, three months. So Dusan is off the list. Um, so for all these players, uh, solid player outside foot shot. For this dude, speed dribbler outside foot shot. And for Schick, he's injury prone, has finesse shot, flair, power header, and technical dribbler. He's he's okay pace. Uh, Boadu has some really good pace. Now, I'm going to be honest. I'm going to drop... Jonathan David off the list because he isn't a realistic signing for Man United right now. So it's out of Patrick Schick and Myron Boadu. So it's the Czech Republican or the Netherlands or the Dutch player. I'm going to go for both and I cannot. So it looks like we're going for Patrick Schick. <laughs> Mara Boadu is off the list. So Patrick Schick is going to be our backup striker. So I'm going to delegate this because I want it to be a bit realistic. Uh, so we're not going to go higher than 54. We're going to offer 37.5. So we'll keep up with that in the next couple of days. But there is also someone else that I was looking at. And that certain someone else is Doniel Marlon. Now this kid could be the future of Dortmund because Haaland is looking to leave well I won't say it's looking to leave but it's looking very increasingly likely he will leave in the summer now a very well rounded player in the attack technical ability not the greatest we're 74 but we could boost their rating they could be our little project so, I'm going to see how much they would be worth. Never mind, it is the same situation. So, let me just go to my other alternate, which is Moise Keane. Real quick. Get him on. Uh, I did scout Victor Osimhen, but I feel like that would be too unrealistic. Moise Keane, young, 21 years old, got some good abilities on him. I think this could be the other striker to contest Patrick Schick in the backup striker. You know? Uh, he's... Wide! <laughs> Three times in a row! Oh my god, I'm stupid, huh? <laughs> I really need to... I do not know ball. Anyways, let's just over. I'll keep an eye on him. Alexander Isaac. I'll scout him. We'll see what happens with the uh, Patrick Schick. And yeah, I'll get back to you shortly when we have reached an agreement. Ladies and gentlemen, I've decided that the other player will be Alexander Isaac that we're going for. We're going to delegate. We're going to skip that. We're going to go 48. And start the offer at 35 million. And we'll get back to where both of the players have agreed terms. Um, but before we do that, let's uh, let's see what we can do here. So we're going to keep Dean Henson. Lee Grant, we're going to let him leave. Tom Heaton, we're going to keep in as a replacement for Lee Grant. He's going to be our reserve keeper. Now, Tellez and Shaw, these two are going to be fighting a lot for their positions. Varane, Maguire... That's good. Twas Bay is at that point at the moment. Lindelof. Bailly. Eric, Eric Bailly could have been the first man on the transfer list. Bjorn Hardy will be on the loan list. So will Will Fish. Now, Wamba Saka is a bit of a different one here compared to Delo. I'm going to keep him for this season. Okay. Got James Garner. Dylan Levitt. Nemanja Matic I will keep for this season as kind of the backup to McFred. Charlie Savage, 
obviously son of Robbie Savage, Fred McTominay, these two are literally running the midfield at the moment. Rashford has had something special, even though he is literally a terrible decision maker. Anthony Alanga, he's our project. I'm going to put a development plan on him to be a wide playmaker. Just give me a second, ladies and gentlemen. I will get back to you when I've done all the uh, development plans. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I've done all the development plans. Paul, Paul, Pogba. Now, here's a question. For those who think Pogba has been a success at United, please put in the comments below why you think that. Because I think he could have done so much more for United, but it just hasn't worked out. So... I think we're going to go very realistic here. We're going to let his contract expire. And then we'll see towards the end of the season how he feels. Hannibal. I've got to do his development plan. Yeah, I'm just going to quickly run through all the players and just tell you what they're going to be. Uh, Hannibal would be an advanced playmaker. Um, Jesse Lingard, I'm going to put out on loan. One matter. We'll talk about renewing contracts in January. Bruno, he's going to be our star player. He's going to be our next Ronaldo. Shola Shaw Tire, loan him out. Plestrian Diallo can stay. Diani Melor, Dimani Melor can go. Anti Martial, we're not going to bring back. We're not bringing back anyone from loan. We want them to go out, enjoy their football before they come back to shit United. But ladies and gentlemen, I will be back when everyone has agreed their deals. Ladies and gentlemen, not what I wanted. The negotiations have broken down for Mr. Patrick Schick. And Labour Cousin are no longer interested in negotiating. Shit. <laughs> so, um, on to some good news, I guess. Uh... Leverkusen want Rashford? No. Give me Schick and then I'll give you Rashford. <laughs> but it seems like Eric Bailly could be moving on to greener pastures now. 12.5 million from AS Monaco. We're going to negotiate this. I want to get a bit more out of him. Maybe 15 mil and then I'll consider letting Bailly go. 15 and a half million, let's go with that. And they've agreed with it. Okay, that was easy. <laughs> but as you can see here, Schick no longer interested. The 47.8 million on that we put that we put towards them, they weren't interested. Right now, it's about 64.4 million for Oscar uh, Alexander Isaac. Alright, so Will Fish, you won't fish. And Charlie Savage, yeah, you are a savage. So, ladies and gentlemen, we are getting into the month of August. We will be playing the first game in this season, which is against... <sighs> Fuck! Isaac negotiations break down! Damn it! Delete. 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 Delete, delete. Diogo Dolo transfer offer. No, thank you. He's going to be a permanent stay in the Man United squad. So, ladies and gentlemen, we are at this point in the 31st of July 2021, where we realise we have no backup strikers. So, it's really, uh, it's up to one man to save us here. The one man, I'm thinking. I just, man, fuck! 12 months after his contract for Mukoko. I just. Can we go back in for Shake? That's the question. Can we go back in for Shake yet? We can. Okay. We are negotiating this time. Alright. Point 40 mil. On the table. They want 57 mil and a 10% release clause. Hell to the fucking no. 
Well, you're 55, and you're going to accept. You're, okay, you want 59. Nah, mate, you're going 56.5. If you walk away from this, it is agreeable. We've reached an agreement. And at this point, ladies and gentlemen, I think we've glitched the game. <laughs> I'll be back with you shortly. Alright, ladies and gentlemen, we are back and we have agreed the deal for Patrick Schick. It's currently the 12th of July because, uh, could be asked to simulate all the way to the 31st at the moment. So, we are here. We've got Patrick Schick. We are trying to reel him in to Manchester United. It's getting a bit tricky. But we got the deal done, about 60 million. Just trying to reel him in. Got about one and a half million less than his release clause, so that's good. But we are now going to negotiate the signing of Patrick Schick. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen, squad roll is going to be. Very important. Yep, uh, four you get nope, five. They agree with that. Nope. Alright, so it's 60. We're gonna go to like 70k. See how he feels about that. Oh my! Yeah! I've messed it up again! Well, ladies and gentlemen, I messed it up, so. Let's go to the 31st of uh, July, shall we? So, whilst I'm here, uh, how are your days going? Uh, what's what's new in your life, eh? Maybe you just watched the new Peaky Blinders. I'm a Peaky Wow. So, if we're not friends, if you want to be my friend, you got to watch Peaky Blinders, mate. You've got to be a Peaky Blinder. A fucking Peaky Blinder you are, mate. You ain't anything more than a peaky blood or you're a fucking dimwit, mate. That's oh, we fucking are, are you, mate? Hey, Linda. Anyways, on the 31st of July, uh, seven messages a Matic offer. Nemanja Matic wanted for 11 million by Arsenal FC New. It's shocking to think he used to play for Chelsea. But anyways, let's uh, let's actually sign Schick, shall we? So I'm just gonna pay the release clause. Let's put about 90k to his day, mate. 90k a week with tax would be about 60 to 50k in his budget. Sporadic. Okay, I'll take that very happily. Uh, Four-year deal. Uh, I'm afraid not, senior. Actually, four-year deal will work just fine. If we just agree to them, they'll be more sympathetic when I give them like 90k and a 2k signing bonus. Fair enough, they're happy with the salary, I'm looking for 7 which, Okay. How about we shorten that down to uh, 680k? There we go, okay, okay. And ladies and gentlemen, the first signing. I don't, I don't, I never thought I'd be saying this, but the first signing. For Manchester United, welcome Patrick Schick to the theatre of dreams. Damn, the number nine. So I'm gonna put a development plan on him real quick. We want it a bit more of a uh, a mobile strike. You know, we'll go for a more complete striker. We are gonna be training him up a bit. Um. Where is my man uh, Zidane Ball? Can go out alone. Anti Langer, let's put a development on, development plan on him real quick. He's staying. A wide playmaker. Sancho will be kind of the same. He's more of a wing fielder. You know what those are? Fair play to you. Now Magnum Matic can stay. Fred can stay. McTominay can stay. Uh, Diogo de Law, Diogo de Law can stay. He's more of an attacking wing back, and that's what he needs to improve on slightly. We need him to pass it 
through to either Pogba or Bruno, whoever is on the right at the game that we play. And then, obviously, they could also overlap the central midfielder to kind of get a bit more close to the winger. But um, we will be running with the 4 3 3 holding that Rangnick is currently using. Uh, Phil Jones come out alone. Uh, um, yeah, Grant can leave. Henson's staying, De Gea's staying. Cavani looks to be leaving at the end of the, end of the year, which I'm very sad about. Cavani will go down to, as a United legend, though. This man, CR7, C is staying. He is staying until his legs literally fall off and he becomes a vegetable and mashed potato. But like I said, we'll be worrying about the site, the uh, contracts at the end of January. Uh, Cavani can stay there for now. Schick though. Uh, goes up to matter and then we'll put him here. I want to play like 10 20 minutes at the end of this game against um, Leeds, which we'll be doing this episode. Uh, Fred, uh, Fred and McTominay can swap McTominay on the bench. I just rely, I think Fred's more reliable in this bit. Uh, cut his side and behind. Um, he can stay alive. Was in behind um, and stay forward. Same with uh, he can get to he can stay on the edge. You need to stay forward, and uh, so does Antti Alanga. Bruno is going to be a uh, basic defense support when needed. Uh, get to box. He needs to be a bit more free roaming. Um, Pogba will be getting forward. Uh, he'll be on the edge of the box and aggressive. Uh, he will stick to position and cover the wing. Fred, he usually runs up just past Pogba's position. So we're going to keep him on cut pass passing lanes. He will uh, be, in case of a bit forward, runs by the opportunity. Rises, be very aggressive, cover the wing. Um, I'm going to free roam. Um, so Maguire will be the one to step up. And aggressive. Varane will be normal and stick to position. Um, Tellez will join the attack and overlap. He won't step up though. Um, same with, yep, alright, pretty much. Uh, cautious with crosses. He can stay balanced. Now the captain sit. Right, well, real quick, we'll give Bruno Fernandes the right shot for a kick. Yep. Uh, uh, yep. The captaincy. Now, there are three other people in this team that people want to be captains. Bruno Fernandes. Cristiano Ronaldo. And David De Gea. Now, I'm ruling out Ronaldo. Because he leads by example, he's not leading the team. He leads by an example, which not a lot of people can really raise and like raise themselves to. Bruno Fernandez is a natural leader. We always see him leading the team at times when Maguire isn't. And David De Gea is the longest standing member of that team and has been taught by many, many captains in United's era, including Vidic and Rooney. So he could probably be one, but I think the decision is that we are going to go with Bruno Fernandes as the new Manchester United captain. Boom. Now, pressure on heavy touch. Um, we're going to do uh, press after possession lost. Actually, no, pressure on heavy touch. We'll be a bit wider here. Bring back the depth though to about there. Uh, I don't want it to be a slow build up, I want it to be more of a balanced uh, chance creation will be the forward runs, which is what we see United do a lot. 
a lot of width for our players. Plays it box, one person on outside corners, want one, and then, yeah. Okay, so it seems like we're ready for our first game, ladies and gentlemen. Sancho, Ronaldo, Langer, Fernandez, Popper, Fred, Tellez, Maguire, Varane, Delo, De Gea. Do I feel that's going to be the start 11? No, I don't think so. But just until next season, we will not be able to sell Maguire because it would not look good on paper to sell our captain straight away. Youth. Our youth scouts, yes. Holy shit, he is a sick goalkeeper. Let's put development plan on him to make him a goalkeeper. Again, uh, he, you're gone, De Bruyne. You're gone. Uh, we'll put some more things on these guys. Uh, deep playing, yes. Fuck's sake. He's French. Hubert, uh, Herbert Jordan. Or Jordan. What the fuck you call it? Release. 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 And release. These two are the ones I want to work on. Um, I think like November, December time we will do the um, the scouting. And then we'll scout until the end of the season. But ladies and gentlemen, I think it's time. Alexandro to Chelsea. Damn, what's your offer? Stuff's going on. Coleman to Inter. Valverde to PSG. Jones loan offer with an option to buy. I will accept that. Delegate. Don't sell the player for less than 2.5. But yeah, that could be a good one for Jones. Going to Wolves. Being a back five. Also, the back five, you're not as dependent on uh, being a good defender. It's more of a keeping in the lines and not it's more about positioning than the actual defending in a back five all right so West Ham Yuki Soma um, Bailly has been sold Phil Jones has agreed to one year move we'll accept the offer then we can get Jones to negotiate the contract but for now let me just manage my interruptions because I'm really sick of tired of these training days but I think it's on the 14th we face but they see Eric Bailly, the number five, for Latcham, which I think is Atalanta? I might be wrong, but ladies and gentlemen, we are here on match day. The Roses derby, Man United versus Leeds United. So ladies and gentlemen, let's attend the press conference. So let's see. Are you ready for your first game? Uh, it's not about me, it's about winning the football match. Next question. Is there pressure on you to make the Champions League? I'm confident we're good enough. Which I am. Very confident. Um, you lucky to bring anyone in? Uh, I'm happy with this group, uh, a lot of hard working people, we just need to fix our mentality and really press down on some of these pressing issues that I've seen from Ranier okay, last summer. Guys, we'll be wrapping up now. Thank, you. Thank you all for being here. So ladies and gentlemen, we are going to uh, set up our starting 11 real quick, which is going to include some certain talent, uh, Ronaldo's already dropped down to a 90 grade. Maguire will not be playing this first game, it will be Lindelof. Fred will not be playing this first game for a bit, it'll be McTominay. And I think for the start, we'll play Mamba Saka over Diogo Delo. And I 
think that is all we need to do. So those three changes will bring on Fred, Delo, and maybe Rashford or Maguire. We're going to start Sancho on the right, and then we're going to move to the left at half time, and then we're going to keep changing them a bit. Keeping them kind of flip floppy, like keep switching their positions, making sure our, well, the wing backs in Diaz and Milenkovic do not really know where or who they're going to be marking on their sides. But uh, just real quick, yep, yep. It is a derby, as you can see, the players face each other. Ladies and gentlemen, to Old Trafford, the theatre of dreams, the Sir Alex Ferguson stand in Manchester, the opening game of the season. Here we are, ladies and gentlemen, we're seeing Ronaldo, Bruno Fernandes, Paul Pogba and Rafa Varane training. We also see some of the Leeds United players in Jack Harrison, Rodrigo, Calvin Phillips training as well. But here we go, ladies and gentlemen, the opening game of the season. You hear the crowd rumbling, you hear the music blaring from Stretford End. As we see, for the first time ever, Bruno Fernandes walking the United players out of the tunnel for the first time in the opening game. Here we are, ladies and gentlemen, you see Sancho, Ronaldo and Varane Three players who are looking to prove themselves at Man United. Ronaldo won a Ballon d'Or here in the Theatre of Dreams. Now the thing is, this is a very different Man United from nearly 16 years ago. Well, nearly 14 years ago, sorry. But our starting lineup, we all know it already. That midfield three is going to be very feisty. Sancho, Ronaldo and Alanga up front. CR7 has returned to Manchester United to stamp his name in the history books. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I think we should take a quick sneak peek at what this team in Leeds United have got to offer. So they've got Ilan Meslier in goal, Milankovic, Laurente Koch, and Diaz in defence, Calvin Phillips in midfield, Rafinha, Stuart Dallas, Klich, and Jack Harrison. With Patrick Van Bamford leading the lines. Junior Furbo, Daniel James, Rodrigo. Three big names. Daniel James, this is obviously his first game. He was sold recently to Man United in the summer. But ladies and gentlemen, this is the big one. The biggest game for the start of a season for Man United. That there could be. And we are... Underway, Man United versus Leeds at Old Trafford. Well, looking good defensively here. But Tommy Day kind of dropping back a bit to help the defence not really staying in the shadows of the midfield and attack. Alanga back to Tellez. McTominay to Bruno Fernandes. Fernandes back to Lindelof to Bruno. To McTominay to Pogba. Pogba tries to see the run to Bruno, but Dallas picks it up. Calvin Phillips to Patrick Bamford. Varane trying to catch the run there. Tellez, very dangerous Rafinha here. Someone who wants to prove himself and try and prove he is a top class player and Klee! What was the defence doing? Klee has got himself a goal for Leeds United. Wan Basaka just did not track him at all. No one saw Klee. Coming in on the right side. Look at the run. Wambasaka cutting it too close. I just don't know what happened there. I think dragging Varane away to try and go after Rafinha was a bad idea. And it is Leeds United with a goal against us. That was my bad. But we are underway again as the referee blows the whistle. We need to do better here. Come on. Let's tell us to Lindelof. Kind of playing around the back a little bit here to kind of get a feel for the game. We can tell Leeds United very energetic, very high mentality. As Popper tries to get to Sancho. Sancho, could it be in? Sancho. Oh, trying to go for a Rabona there, but just couldn't get it. Didn't see the, defend, the defender of Lorente there. 
obviously this is my first game with Man United so it's going to take a little while Rafinha on the ball already Lindelof tracking him make sure he can't make any runs while well, Massacre on the edge of the post good job there now it's time to run the ball didn't see Diaz running up behind him but McTominay with beautiful interception now gets it to CR7 my United fan favourite Bruno Fernandes is in Bruno Fernandes and he misses the fans disappointed Bruno Fernandes the new United captain misses the goal by just a hair off his little chinny chin chin and it is a Leeds United goal kick for Ian Meslier who's going to pass it straight to Koch Ronaldo intercepts the ball to Sancho who shoots and Meslier gets the ball oh Alanga goes in for it intercepts beautifully again Leeds United cracking under the pressure a little bit but Man United just can't they just can't capitalise on these mistakes Wambasaka gets the ball there to McTominay over to Jadon Sancho to Bruno Fernandes who tries to run past Lorente just did not drag the ball wide enough here we go now Rafinha gets past Alex Tellez Rafinha on the ball and Harrison and it's a penalty Wambasaka with a tackle in the box it's a penalty for Leeds United let's have a look at it it is definitely a penalty De Gea blocks it but it is indeed a penalty for Leeds United can they go 2-0 up and he's gone down the middle of Patrick So I want to make this a bit trickier for us not to win the game Premier League at first season. So here we go. Wambasaka to Paul Pogba, back to McTominay to Bruno Fernandes who missed a clinical chance earlier. Lindelof to Varane to Pogba who sees Ronaldo. Ronaldo turns his man, sees Bruno on the run. Bruno, can he get past his man? Bruno, he's through. Bruno Fernandes misses. Messier with a great save. No idea what's going on with the Man United attack. They just can't score. And Pogba takes down the defender and here's a free kick for Leeds United. Pass it straight to Diaz. Pogba, what, well, one could be a yellow card. Varane. Oh, Ronaldo gets the ball. Ronaldo to Alanga, to Bruno. Oh, Sancho misses. Sancho too much pace there and has lost the ball. Diaz getting run into by Ronaldo. Ronaldo's trying to get the ball back into their hands. Bamford to Klich, back to Bamford. Stuart Dallas over to Rafinha and it's offside. Tellers has a very, very dangerous job today. Rafinha is an absolute machine. But here we go, wan to Varane. Back to Paul Pogba. Rudolf Nans, McTominay to Lindelof over to Tellez who plays it to McTominay making his run as always and Pogba was making a run Bruno tried to see it but there was a defender there and you see Varane trying to cover off Jack Harrison now Jack Harrison oh brilliant defending Harrison trying to go for a couple of skill moves there Pogba an absolute tank over to Jadon Sancho who cuts it in to Cristiano Ronaldo CR7 Ronaldo and it's a goal Manchester United and Ronaldo soon Ronaldo scores on his return to Man United and it's 2-1 Absolutely clinical finishing from CR7. Gets past an offender. Sees the run and gets it comfortably in the bottom left corner. Elan Meslier could not save that because it is CR7's first goal back in the Premier League. It is Leeds United 2, Man United 1. 
Rafinha to Stuart Dallas, back to Rafinha, Tellez stepping up to go after him, but back to Dallas to Calvin Phillips, obviously somewhat of an interest from United in the summer as a as an alternative to Declan Rice after his brilliant Euros performance, Calvin Phillips to Klich, back to Bamford, for Ramway a great inception, Lindelof to Bruno, to McTominay and it is half time. What a game it has been. And that man, Bruno Fernandes, has had a slow day indeed. Just wide as you can see, but it is 2-1. Man United need to pick up the pace in the second half. Ladies and gentlemen, we have one change made. Man United have brought on Fred for Scott McTominay. McTominay had a good first half, but it seems like Man United just want that bit extra in the second half in their central midfielder and Fred is a man for it. Going after Calvin Phillips there, pressuring him to make that forward pass. That's what Fred's been good at doing, trying to pressure the players into making passes that they don't need to at the time. But look at the pressure, the pressing from Man United is absolutely stellar. Ronaldo's through. Cristiano Ronaldo. Ronaldo shoots and it's 2-2. Two -two. Ronaldo has scored and he has brought hope back to Manchester United. What a brilliant goal again, bottom left corner. Ronaldo with all the space in the world and Langer kind of dragging out the defender until Ronaldo got into the box and then look, he was too late. And he got it past Meslier. And the excitement on our faces is now, it is Manchester United 2. Leeds United 2. Ronaldo fan favourite here at Old Trafford. Varane, beautiful there. Great pressing. Over to Sancho. Sancho to Bruno Fernandes. Is he offside? Bruno's not offside. What is he doing? Bruno Fernandes has made every mistake not stick. This is a terrible performance from the Portuguese, but he's now out wide. Sees Tellers behind him to Anthony Alanga, but Lorente gets the ball. Tellers chase after Rafinha. Rafinha, probably the star player for Leeds. Bamford timing his run perfectly back to Rafinha. And it seems like Bamford over to Calvin Phillips to Jack Harrison. And it is Cleek again! Could that be the winner for Leeds United? Klich with a brilliant goal. Getting it over the body of David De Gea. And you see Popper just trying to come off that side run. It seems like Varane is really trying to step up to these players. So I think for now, what we're going to do is go to my instructions. And stop Varan stepping up. No, sorry, stop Lindelof from stepping up. Because he seems like Lindelof stepping up a bit. But let's just try and get this winner. And just get a win here. Because we can't be drawing against Leeds. Who, to be fair, did have a good season in 21. So we don't know if we can or cannot. Oh, Rafinha. Bruno Fernandes gets the ball. Get it. Shirt drags, but Alang was offside. It was clear the defender dragged back there to make it offside. The offside trap worked wonders against Anthony Alanga. Milankovic hits it out, but Bamford just gets in the way of Fred. Fred, obviously not the greatest aerial threat, being five for eight. But Aaron Basaka just not seen that outside run from Jack Harrison. But Lindelof seen that beautiful play that was going to be made by Leeds United. Oh, and Phillips with a brilliant tackle. Bringing down their star playmaker, Bruno Fernandes. And it is Harrison to Bamford! Patrick Bamford skies it! There's a substitution. Stuart Dallas coming off. For Rodrigo, who is putting on the captain's armband. 
let's see how this goes but for now Man United need to get a move on we need to get some really high paced football going here Fred to Bruno to Ronaldo it seems like they're listening to the commentators but here we go Lidloff covering off the run here beautifully Pogba gets the ball over to Bruno it seems like for sure going wide here Lindelof tracking him here Lindelof really working oh Fred gets the ball to Pogba Pogba tries to get past Diaz Jack Harrison now to Rodrigo to Bamford and Varane sees the run to, but it gets back to Rodrigo to Rafinha Rafinha still on the ball though sharpen it up De Gea Brilliant save. Fred now to Bruno Fernandes. To Fred. Tries to get to a line go. Oh my god. What is the passing in this game? Absolutely dreadful today. But for now, I think we're going to keep on Ronaldo. We're going to put Ronaldo up left. I like this coming off for the Patrick Schick. We're going 4 2 4. There it is, 4 2 4. Put Pogba in midfield and we're bringing Ronaldo on. Well, Rashford on the left. Bruno wide and up. And same with Bola Pogba. We just need these goals, man. We need them. We need them now. So let's hope we can get this ball out of play and then bring on these players. Bamford to Forshaw to Phillips back to Patrick Bamford to Rodrigo Rodrigo goes for it to Hale with a save oh no well Masaka's made a mistake but to Hale blocks another goal scoring opportunity for Leeds United Ronaldo on the ball Cristiano Ronaldo secures the ball there gets it to Anthony Alanga who cuts inside but dodgy touch there Ilan Meslier kicks it out. Can Fred get to the ball? No. Fred does get to the ball. Pogba tries to get to Bruno, but it's just their defence is too solid. We might not even be able to get our players on to go for the 4 2 4. And this might be the end. We might lose to Leeds United. Man United need this win. To secure the chances of a title. Pogba to Bruno Fernandes. We see Ronaldo going for the run. Ronaldo's through. Ronaldo just needs to lose that defender. Ronaldo! It is a perfect tag trick for Ronaldo. And it is a tie. What a ball. What a goal. CR7 has returned to Manchester United in style. Just look at the composure from CR7. Absolute specimen of a man. The GOAT of football has done it again. But ladies and gentlemen, remember we have added time. And it seems like we have brought on our 4-2-4. Finally, Pogba gets the ball to Bruno. And we're going to win this in Fergie time. Ronaldo. Cristiano Ronaldo, can he make the run? Bruno gets the ball. Bruno trying to run through. It does not seem like we will get it. Rodrigo. Oh no. Bamford's through. Patrick Bamford. He's going to win it. No, De Gea. De Gea comes out and wins the ball. And it's a draw. What a game. And it is CR7 who is man of the match 100%. Oh my god. What a game. We should have lost that so hard. But it is Ronaldo who scores in Fergie time to get an equaliser. Oh my god. That man has just won it. Has just got us a point there. God damn it. I'm going to go to this interview now and see what we have to say for ourselves.
A 3-3 free -free draw against Leeds is not a bad ending, but we should have won that. Alright, so is that a point gained or two dropped? Uh, I hope the fans don't feel let down. Um, it's not what I wanted in our first game, but Leeds United are an incredibly high-paced opponent and we just couldn't match it. Uh, were you grateful to scrape that draw? Um, I like a team that never gives up, and that is what United stands for. For the last 30 years, that is what we have as a unit. It was a game you couldn't take your eyes off for a moment. Did you enjoy it? Um, to win, you have to have some control in the game. I feel like the midfield didn't really give it to us, and we just need to get a better grasp on it and just really work That's on all it. The questions we have for you. But yeah. Damn it. A draw to start off the season. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you all so much for watching. Episode 2, we'll be facing three teams, which will be Southampton, Wolves, and then Newcastle. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you all so much for watching. Take care and peace.